Hey guys, so I told you I'd do a couple problems um, all the way out. Uh, so this is a frappy, um, which is from the 2012 AP. Um, and so the question asks, a survey organization conducted telephone interviews in December 2008 in which 1,009 randomly selected adults in the U.S. responded to the following question. At the present time, do you think television commercials are an effective way to revert to promote a new product. Of the 1,009 adults surveyed, 676 responded yes. Um, one year earlier, um, in December 2007, 622 of 1,020 uh, responded yes to the same question. Do the data provide convincing evidence that the proportion of adults in the U.S. who responded yes to the question changed from December 2007 to 2008. Okay, so keywords that you want to use in order to figure out what kind of a um, test you're going to be doing are proportion, right? So that one, that tells you obviously that you're going to be dealing with proportions, not means. Um, and then they say, did the data provide convincing evidence that the proportion of da da da, da changed from December 2007. Okay, what that means is that since it doesn't say um, what has the proportion increased or has the proportion decreased, um, you just want to know if it has changed. That means it's going to be two-sided. So your, your alternative hypothesis is going to have a not equals two. So um, since it's a two-sided, we could answer this two different ways. One, we could answer it with a confidence interval, um, and then the other way we could do a hypothesis test. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. Um, your state plan and conclude are going to be really similar if you're doing either one, um, but your do step is going to be uh, significantly different. Your numbers are going to be different. Um, so. Um, I, I think I personally would want to do a, hypo a hypothesis test. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so first you want to tell your audience what it is that you're going to be doing um, and at what significance level or if you're doing a confidence interval, what confidence inter at what confidence level. Um, I'm doing a con uh, two sample Z test for the difference in proportions of people who responded yes in 2007 compared to 2008 at an alpha level 0 0.05 um, significance level. Um, and then also, in, so you need to have, essentially you need to be telling people what you're doing, what confidence level or what significance level it's going to be at. And then for um, a significance test, you have to do um, your hypothesis tests. So our null hypothesis is the thing that you're trying to prove to be wrong. So um, if we assume, if, if we have two different proportions, usually we're testing if they're equal um, or if the difference between them is zero. And so my null hypothesis is going to be that my true proportion, remember your hypothesis test is all about um, your parameters, right? It's about your population, not about the statistic. If you did a significance test for the statistic, that wouldn't make any sense at all because you already have the statistic. You already have the true stat, right? Six, 676 out of 1,009, that is your statistic. You have it. You don't need to do a test for it. That would be silly. So, my null hypothesis is that my p, I'm going to go p7 um, minus p8 is equal to 0. So that means that the difference between the two proportions is the same. Um, another way to write this, you can also say that p7 equals p8, right? That's fine. Either of those hypothesis tests are equivalent, okay? Um, the reason I usually give you guys this one is because that is your, um, that's your pr true parameter 
that's the mean of the sampling distribution and so it relates to the um, actual math of it a little bit better. Um, so anyways, but if it helps, you can do they, that they equal each other. Um, so then my alternative hypothesis is going to be, um, remember in this case we decided, um, since it just said changed, not increased or decreased, um, we're just looking to see if it is not equal to zero. So our alternative hypothesis is P7 minus P8 is not equal to zero. Or if you chose the other option, P7 does not equal P8. Okay, same thing. That's not what I did, but just so you know. Okay, and then again, remember, because I used my parameters, P7 and P8, I need to state what those are. So you can say something like where P7 and P8 are the true proportion of people who responded yes to this question in 2007 and 2008, respectively. Okay, so that's our state. Uh, then we want to plan, check all of our conditions. One, random. Um, if we go back to this, it says um, we had randomly selected adults in 2008 um, and also 2007 also had randomly selected so yeah it was true for both samples okay normal so remember this is not the n is greater than or equal to 30 thing um, because the binomial distribution from like chapter 6 or something um, with proportions is only approximately normal if um, n times p and n times 1 minus p are both greater than or equal to 10. Um, the closer p is to 0.5 and the larger your sample size is the closer and closer it is to normal to a normal distribution. Um, so we have to check that n times p condition for both samples. Alright, so our, for our first sample, 2007, um, n times p hat was 622, and n times 1 minus p hat is 398. And then we have to check that for the 2008 um, survey as well. So for 2008, n times p hat was 676, and n times 1 minus p hat was 333. Remember, this is checking on only in your samples, not on uh, your true proportions, because you're trying to test the true proportions. So these are all p hats. 10% rule uh, for independence um, or independence of trials, I guess. Um, in this case, right, uh, in, in 2008, um, we, there are definitely more than um, 10,090 adults. And for um, the other one, there's definitely more than 10,200 adults in the U.S. All right. Um, so we have successfully checked all of our conditions. We're ready to go. Um, so let's move on to the actual calculation step. Um, I'm going to include everything that we need, I hope. If it, we happen to need some other things later, I'll, I'll just add them on the list, but um, include everything that we need in the do step before I actually start calculating things. So we're going to need our um, p hat for 2007. We're going to need our p hat for 2008. Um, we need n for 2007. I'll just put it next to it. n for 2007. Um, our n for 2008. Um, we're going to need our standard deviation, and in this case, it's only going to be actually be our sta standard error, um, just because we don't actually know p, uh, the true proportion in 2007 or the true proportion in 2008. So we have to use um, the statistic to estimate it. So my standard error is going to be um, that formula, the square root of p1 times 1 minus p1 
um, all over n1 plus p2 times 1 minus p2 all over n2, okay? Um, but since this is a hypothesis test and we're assuming that the null hypothesis is true, mainly that um, in 2007 the proportion is the same as 2008, um, we can do our pooled um, are pooled uh, proportions, um, and this is going to end up being p hats because we don't actually know the true proportions. So this is going to be approximately the square root of p hat c times 1 minus p hat c all over n1 plus p hat c uh, times 1 minus p hat c over n2. Um, so that means I also need to include p hat c in my list of <laughs> stuff that I need to calculate. Luckily, most of this stuff is really easy to calculate. So in 2007, our proportion of people who responded yes was 622 out of 1,020. In 2008, we had 676 out of 1,009. And then my um, combined proportion, or my pooled proportion, is just that 622 plus 676 over the total, um, I would say that that was like one enormous sample, essentially. So out of 1020 plus 1009. So then next I'm going to need to um, do my test statistic, which in this case, because it's proportions, is Z. Okay, so Z is my statistic, which is going to be my P hat in 2007 minus my p hat in 2008 minus my true proportion in 2007 minus my true proportion in 2008 all over the standard deviation of the statistic which is that nasty thing okay now we've included pretty much everything except p7 minus p8 so um, since we're assuming that those are um, equal we can actually just set those equal to zero and uh, and then I can just actually use my calculator to figure everything else out. Um, my goal is to, because it's a two-sided test, I'm going to do two times um, the probability that z is going to be um, less than or equal to whatever my um, whatever my value is, which I'm going to get from my calculator. So then I go to stat tests, and I have two samples. So is it this one? No, because it's a Z test and then a T test. But down here, we have a two proportion Z test. We have two samples, it's proportions, and we're doing a test. So it's not an interval. Um, so it is going to be six. And then we want to plug in all of our data. So x1 is the number of successes or the number of S yeses you got. Um, and for me, my x1, it's your first one. So I did 2007 minus 2008. Um, so I have to include the 2007 here. Otherwise, my numbers are going to be swapped. Um, if you did it the other way, you would just put your the data opposite. Um, and then I want to check that P1 does not equal P2. We determined that in the beginning. And then I want to calculate. And it gives me my Z value. So I can put that on my paper. Um, negative 2.822. Um, and then my uh, this is equal to my P value, right? That's the probability of getting um, the difference that I found or anything more extreme than that okay on both sides because it's a two-sided two test um, so my p-value is equal to 0 0.0048 um, if we're rounding um, and since this is very small we're going to reject the null hypothesis so something like the following since our p-value of 0 0.0048 is less than our alpha of 0 0.05 we reject the null hypothesis. We do have statistical evidence to conclude that the responses did in fact change from 2007 to 2008.